The work is back in the milling machine and I've already uh, located the edge of it as I did uh, when I uh, put the sprue in or the gate. So my y-axis is already set uh, by an edge finder and then in the x-axis I had a layout line so I'm in line, I got the table locked, I got a starter drill in the chuck I'll drill it quarter inch all the way into the cavity. I just rough drilled the hole three quarters of an inch and now I am ready to go in with the boring bar and all of the finishing work up to that size will be done with the boring bar. It's about at 750 right now and I need to go to 850. I have installed my trusty Criterion boring head which is a DBL 202 into a three quarter inch collet and uh, now I'm ready to start boring and this is covered in other videos so I'm not going to show it all but I'll be feeding with the hand wheel here now rather than the quill feed which I took off so it's not in the way and it doesn't hit me in the head. Now make sure there's no loose clothing or sleeves or anything else. I'm going to roll up my sleeves right now around the boring bar because they run off center and are very prone to grab things. I'll just show you my first cut and my last with the boring head. I think you've all seen this anyway. And I've set my stop here so I can only go down that far and not strike the bottom of the cavity and ruin the mold. Hate to ruin the thing at this point in time after this much work. And when I hit the stop, it throws the lever off. I've taken several passes and I have uh, 20 thousandths to go so I fed it in 20 thousandths and uh, now I'm going to take that last pass and then measure. I was at uh, 0 0.850 and then I had checked it for a fit and the pipe would not go in there and I, I took a piece of pipe, cut it off and beveled it. So I, I had to go back and I took off uh, 8 thousandths more and was still a little snug with this piece but the actual piece that I intend to use uh, fits in quite nicely. There seems to be a tolerance on this, uh, this pipe, it's not all the same size but I would rather have a little slop in there because I don't believe the lead can escape anyway. So that's a pretty good fit there. I mean it is wobbly but again like I said this one doesn't go in. It just starts. There's more black coating on this than there is on the other one. So uh, I did move the work aside and then uh, I had to center it again and using uh, the DRO it's so nice to be able to come back on center and then uh, continue with the boring and, and have it to be very accurate. So that is done and I'm going to take it out and uh, just a few more operations and the mold might be done. Here it is with a piece of pipe installed in it. It might be a little bit uh, too loose, the trek, but uh, it's going to work. Notice that on this one, obviously it was a little loose because there's a little leakage there, but it really doesn't matter one bit. When the, uh, when the hot metal hits the cold steel, although I will preheat this a little bit, and it will conduct down and be hot anyway, but <clears throat> it'll freeze off. You know, I do like my chiclets for a little snack. Why is it a pack of gum now costs 
60 or 70 cents or even a dollar for pack for a nickel pack of gum but you can still get the chiclets uh, in a six pack at the dollar store comes for about comes to about uh, 17 cents a pack uh, they're made in Columbia and I don't mean Columbia Missouri now the actual handle like this and remember I put those two nuts on there just to keep the thing from pulling out It'd be something like that when I actually pour it <clears throat> pardon me this is a core box that I made oh I made it back when well you know when when I was in my prime but notice the little slots here and the purpose of those was to use a screwdriver and to be able to pry it open had one on each side that way you don't uh, you don't damage the mold and you don't care if there's a little bit of uh, pry marks there because it's not going to prevent the mold from uh, opening and they only need to be on one side they don't need to be on both halves of the mold so what I will do here take this over to the milling machine and put four of those little slots in about where you see these horseshoes here and I'll go oh a little less than an eighth of an inch deep perhaps a hundred thousandths deep four of them and that'll only take a minute I'm back in the milling machine you see one slot they're a hundred thousandths deep Not very critical at all. And there'll be four of them. Just a little deburring. And the mold is done and I'm ready to go out in the garage and pour a sample. Now you can see how easy it'll be for me to pry it open now in four different places. One other thing that I have to do before pouring these is that, uh, can you visualize this, pouring the <coughs> hot lead in there and the lead immediately escaping out the pipe, possibly burning the, uh, the person that's doing the pouring. So what I will do is this can be uh, stuffed with uh, oh, steel wool or you know other uh, materials or even a steel plug but I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is uh, take this to my foundry and I will pack this with a little sand pour some foundry sand down here pound it in good and hard just a, a short little section here to prevent the uh, lead from escaping now back when I was teaching many many years ago I had a cast iron mold for this and what I would do is uh, I would heat the end of the pipe red hot and pinch it in the vise and that would close it off also keep the handle from pulling out the the problem with that is that it also distorted the pipe a little bit farther back than where I pinched it so sometimes the pipe would no longer fit in in here it would uh, it would be too large or I would have to shove it way up to overcome that distorted portion so uh, I'm not going to do that I'm going to uh, use sand like I just described you to you but you do have to have some kind of preventative measure from keeping the lead from escaping okay let's go out in the garage I'm back in the garage the lead is melted and I'm getting about uh, right around 500 degrees a little less than 500 degrees I'm going to scrape the dross off that's just impurities uh, that float to the top and some of it is due to uh, the atmosphere, the air reacting with it or whatever. I like to get that off. I just throw it away but uh, big firms uh, are able to sell their dross like a steel mill that uh, galvanizes. There's a tremendous amount of that zinc and it goes back to the refineries gets resold, repurified and resold. Waste not, want not. 
The mold is almost up to, up to temperature, so I'll be pouring here presently. My pipe handle is like being preheated a little bit, and you can see I've got it packed with uh, foundry sand, and we've got the double conduit nuts on there to hold it into the lead, so that's all ready to go. And lately I have been using this uh, old plate here with some wells on it as a, as a lid for the pot to retain some of the heat. seems to help. You know, I've got another furnace, or I did have another furnace, where the pot went uh, much farther down into the furnace. This one is really uh, raised up quite a, quite a ways. Perhaps I should take uh, a saw and saw off part of these little prongs around there that would uh, allow the pot to go in a little bit deeper. Maybe this was made for a different size pot. But then you can't have it too close to the flames, but that's the way the uh, uh, Johnson furnace was made. And then it had a cast iron ring too, which of course immediately broke, and that was used to uh, adapt it to different size uh, pots. Well, here it is, my very first lead hammer with the pipe handle. Whoa! Overshot the pot. Okay. I'll let that cool. And you can see it was good and hot because it's shrinking like crazy. Probably too hot. I'm sure that the metal was a lot hotter than the mold. We'll open this up in about five minutes or less. Okay, it's been about five minutes and I can't wait. And it, it pried open real easily. I got it started. Wow, pretty good for my first shot. Looks like right here there, there might be just a little bit of uh, cooling off, but I don't think it matters. The handle is too long. I will now determine where to cut it off. We're probably at about 10 inches. I think I'll measure the length of a ball-peen hammer and make it the same. I of course need to saw this off. Now right now I only have one piece of pipe so that's all I can do at the moment. No lead escaped out of the end. Let's see if any of that sand comes out. Not all of it. Nor does it matter. Okay, I'm going to shut everything down here because I have to go to the hardware store and get some more pipe. Now, you notice that uh, virtually nothing escaped down here along here. So the fit was pretty good. I'm going to let that cool and we'll go down in the basement and summarize all of this because this is just about the end of the video, the longest video I've ever made in my life, and about 10 days has elapsed from the time that I started. I'm back in my nice warm basement. It was a little chilly out today. You need to use a nice coarse blade when you cut lead. I can peen that over. Oh, that's soft lead. I think I forgot to tell you, but I had marked the handle with a magic marker line here, a Sharpie, so that I knew how far into the mold to shove the pipe. So I didn't want it coming all the way out the other end. So the pipe comes probably three-quarters of the way into the head, but that's what that mark is for. Now I laid this across or alongside of this other hammer, and I deemed this is kind of a nice length. So I'm going to 
cut it off right there on a bandsaw and deburred. I wanted that thread off there anyway, but what I did is I bought a, a 12 inch uh, pipe nipple and uh, I because I wanted to remove the thread. I didn't want a thread there because it's going to hurt your hand. So if I would have bought a 10 incher I would have had a thread right here. So I had to buy a 12 incher and throw it away, but I suppose if they had 11 inch I could have got that, but I don't think they did. So I'll just saw that off on the band saw it, square it up and uh, take the burr off on the little uh, belt sender. I'll do that right now. There it is all done. Took the burr off. Threw that thread away. You know I took the label off. Have you guys noticed when you watch the comments sometimes I can uh, stand on my head and spend hours doing something and then somebody will say how come you didn't take the tag off the pipe handle or some little irrelevancy so I took it off, but I'm sure they'll find something else to pick on. But I had to heat it to do that, to get it off, because it's so sticky. Then it was stickier than ever. You know, I bought this thing at a, at a garage sale for $2 in a box. Just the head. The tank, I had six of them already. I love that thing. It's from Ace Hardware. That's slicker than sliced bread. I'll be using that a lot. My shop is a filthy mess. It's going to take me hours to clean it up and I left a mess in the garage as well. And Working with plaster is uh, very very messy. So in just a moment I'm going to summarize this thing and uh, tell you what I did. You know in college we were taught uh, to uh, Tell the class what you're going to tell them, and then go ahead and tell them, and when you're done, tell them what you told them. So that's what I'm doing. I believe this is the longest video I've ever made, uh, and it uh, took me eight to ten days, I'm not sure exactly how long, to make to finish this project and to make the video. And it's uh, over two hours in length and broken up into five or six parts. So be sure and watch all the parts. Or, well, you would have watched all the parts. But watch them in their entirety. Because I went to a great deal of uh, detail in this particular video. But what I've done in summary here is to take a piece of hard rock maple. In turn from it, make a split pattern of the lead hammer. Using the blue split pattern made a plaster mold. From the plaster mold I made a sand mold which is not uh, seen here and out of the sand mold came the aluminum lead hammer molds and out of the lead hammer molds came the final product the lead hammer itself. I hope you found this video informative and interesting and tell your friends about it if you liked it. Now I also realize there isn't anybody in the world that is going to do what I just did because there's no need for it and you can buy one of these for five dollars and I paid two dollars for the handle. But uh, you might find it interesting the various steps that, that I made to do this and, and the reality is if you were Wanting one of these bad enough, you'd go on to eBay and buy a cast iron mold and make them. So, hope you enjoyed this video. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.